Medhead. Well, Growing uh, out with the stuff all over. That's right. People just didn't have any pride about themselves. You know, they were kind of country-like, and they didn't care how they looked. And, of course, you don't know anything about that. Uh, but long years ago, when we graduated from that, we spruced up, you know, and cleaned up and uh, when all you graduated but from what? From graduated from the Linheads, you know, <laughs> being all. They called us country hoosiers. That's what they called us, country hoosiers. They said that all the people that worked in the plants, you know, were country hoosiers and they didn't care how they looked. Who said that? It was just just talk. It was the uh, higher class of people. You know, they run the cotton mill people down, and uh, they said there were lin heads, called them lin heads, and all these things. And uh, they had a right to because they didn't try to uh, fix themselves up and went dirty and nasty, dip snuff and. <laughs> it would run down the sides of their faces. But they were some that wasn't classed like that. But you know how it is. The majority always rules, and that's what they look to. And they pattern everybody else. They say that uh, everybody's like that. But uh, then people begin to take pride in themselves, you know. And I know I have uh, had people to even mock me because I tried to look clean. They'd make fun of me because I would go in looking nice and clean, you know. And uh, Take they would, with her too. They, they'd they say that I uh, thought I was better than anybody else because I tried to keep myself clean and all. I've had a lot of things said about me on that account, but I always believed in staying clean. <laughs> Whether you had very expensive clothes to wear or not, well, I thought you ought to stay clean. Was, what we had was clean, and uh, that 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 went a long ways. Of course, now uh, all the people went that way. They were just just some of them. But it along about thirty four was a time whenever they started changing this thing yeah. over. Yeah, yeah, it started changing. And it over. got better and better and better. Mm -hmm. and, and you can walk in over there now where we retired from, and they've made so much change there since we have left. They uh, tell us that we wouldn't recognize it. Mm -hmm. and so, but uh, we were speaking about the Norma Ray picture. You know that is really downgraded. You know the way they were in that picture, it really downgraded the uh, textile people. Really worse than what we ever saw in that, our place. That movie was worse than the conditions you worked in? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was worse than the conditions yeah, that we... It they blowed it up. Now, it could have been like that there. I'm not saying it wasn't in Opelika, you know. But uh, it wasn't where we were. You know it was it was moved, uh, taped over here in Opelika. Uh-huh, over yeah. in Opelika. And now, around the time of 34, that's when the stretch out was happening, right? Well, well it was a little. A little it was later. a little later than that that they began to That's stretch. That's whenever they, 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 they see the spinner had the ten size, and they come in on Monday. And say, well, they had they had pencil guys working on it, and for a while, showing you know that they could do more work. In other words, and they they had to say they had 10 sides. Well, on Monday, they, they moved them down two, give them 12. And then in a few months, they give them 14. And a few more months, they give them 18 and 20. Well, that's about as high as they got. But, uh, at that time. Yeah, at that time. But when I went on the uh, instructing job, I was running 34 sides. Yeah. That was in 1934. But no, no, that wasn't in 1934. That no, was on no, over no, the that, years. That was over okay. the years. Over they, they the know. years. See, in 34, they had started that stretching out. Uh, you know. They run six and eight sides, six, eight, and ten sides in 34. Yeah. Well, and, and, and they, uh, 
as time went by, they improved on the machinery. And I, we put new machinery in over there because I hope, I hope I put it in. Well, that made uh, that made the jobs a little better, and they could handle more, handle more. Okay, and that was in uh, thirty-eight, I believe. When we yeah, thirty-six. From thirty-six time, to thirty-eight. As time goes by, they keep improving, and they keep a uh, you know they would uh, you know speed up on these new frames would take a faster. You know, run faster, turn out more production, and uh, that uh, that just gradually worked in with the people. But it, some of them didn't want to accept it. A lot some of them, them quit. There was a, you know, there was just a piling up on them, but they had to in a way because they had competition. They were doing it elsewhere in the in the country, and therefore they had to do it where we were. That would cause a lot of uh, strikes in different places, yeah. but it didn't in our uh, areas. And when they began to talk union in our place at Columbus, at Columbus, well, they would squelch it. You know, they would if they found anybody that was even vaguely thinking about joining the union somewhere or they'd other. They'd discourage it. They'd discourage it. How do you and, feel about that? And still do that, too. Yeah, we, we still don't feel like that. We you, just don't believe in union. You, you know. see, the reason we don't believe in union is because where uh, we were raised as children, as that's at Dwight Manufacturing Company, they tried to put a union in there and did while we were kids. But we never did belong to the union, me and her. We never did join. We never did have to join, but some, some, sometimes it, we would be threatened. If you don't join the union, you're going to lose your job. But the company, they didn't care. They didn't care about us joining the union. That was the, uh, the uh, what you call them, them, them union guys. It was a putting, getting everybody to join the union. They would have some, some spotted around through the. Room, uh, agging it on all the time. See, did they do that in Columbus in yeah. '34? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they did. They tried to, and they hand out paper, you know, pamphlets at the gates. You know, when the people would come in and go out, and they just throw them down. To join the union, and uh, uh, most of them just look at it and drop it. If they on. found out that it was union. They just throw it down. And went and look at it. They just wasn't interested in it because they'd heard too many, uh, where too many places, you know, had just completely shut down on the count of the union because they made it such high demands and all. You see, uh, the union don't give you anything. You have to pay so much to belong to the union. And, and, and there's always a hothead in there wanting to strike. And, then, and if you don't get what he asks for, what the group asks for, then they'll call a strike. And you'll lose more than you gain if you win. By being on the strike, you know, if, for a time. long time. Of course, you know, some of these unions, they, they, they build up a fund and they, they give you so much a week to buy groceries with, uh, you know, uh, keep you going for so many weeks. But however, that that, that don't uh, don't work out too well with some people. And there's always a crook in that crowd <laughs> wants to run off with the money. You know. Did you ever hear of that happening here in Columbus? No. Well, uh, we never did hear of but that. But that, that, that happened over in where we was raised as kids over at that mill. They finally just shut that mill down. There were no cotton they mill. They didn't even dump the bricks down the hall. Yeah, all. they now, tore it. No sign the whole thing, no, no sign of the plant at all now there. And it was a beautiful place. And the union done that now. We know that the union was the cause of all that. 
so now did you go to did you did you see any of the people picketing during the strike yeah we saw them uh, and just walking around and, uh, and trying to keep anybody from going to work so, uh, not just at, talking not at our meal not at our meal because there wasn't nobody going to work we were notified when to come in but over at the via that's where the that's where the the main core was over at the via mill in other words they called out the national guards and, and, and with their guns and all over there of course i don't think they would have to shoot anybody but they shot a little bit around in the air you know bing bing and it don't take much of that to get a fella to go to look and see where he's going <laughs> they i i believe that they brought in the national guard and you know but if we just it's better if we leave it Oops, yeah, that they brought it in in September, because I think there was a strike in July, and then there, then there was another it, strike in September. Yeah, it lasted yeah. on to September probably. I think it did at Over the there. bib at the bib mill. So it you went back hard. to work. Yeah, yeah we, we went, went back, back to work. work. And in September, when they called the national strike, yeah. remember that? Yeah. All the strike, all the mills all across the country were striking. We were out a couple of weeks then. That's just before I went to work. Yeah. We were out a couple of weeks then. But uh, maybe it was a little longer then. I don't remember. But it, it wasn't no time after then. The general strike. Yeah. The general strike that I went to work. So I, I well, didn't. Well, see, all, all the plants in, on the general strike, all, all the plants in town, all the mills. They had to. They, they all struck. They all went out. Those that... It wasn't union, and they all just shut down, and those that Keep wanted to, down go trouble, to work, you know. come back to work. And they, uh, them, it was there. They didn't want to go back to work. A lot of them left town, first one thing, another. Lost their cars, couldn't make payments on them. Did you ever we didn't have one, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> now, were you being paid during this t period of time? No, that's what I said. They was feeding us, you know. It's that's all we got. Script. Just you don't happen yeah. to have any more of that script. You never said. No, it, we don't. I wish we could have kept some of that, but you know, when you're young, you don't think about things like that. Or at least we didn't then. Now, did you keep um? Do you recall l reading the newspaper about what was going on, or listening to the news, or all? Did you do? Did you keep abreast of the news at the time? Yeah, pretty well. I, I, I'm a pretty much of a news hound myself. Uh, I kept up with what was going on most all over the state. You know, that was all over the state. And uh, some people got killed. And uh, some got hurt pretty bad here in that September thing. You know, I was telling you about in July, I don't think anybody got hurt during that time. But they turned over a few cars and burned them. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> there was a fella living next, next door to us that's uh, taking a part in that, and he was a great big robust so, young so man. So he was on the side of the strikers? Yeah. He was on the side of the strikers. And, and that, he, he, he was a leader, you know. In other words, you, you always got to have a leader. If you, if you get a, a, a row started, a group, you know, started, you got to have somebody to lead. Somebody that, that's uh, loud mouthed and, uh, and and don't care for nothing, don't mind getting hurt, but he'll he'll he's a good leader till he gets it going good bad, then he'll step in the background and let you do the fight. Because he don't want to get beat up. <laughs> but we never did get on, in on nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this man who was the leader? Yeah, but I can't remember his name right now. Ed Lee Haynes, what? Yeah. Ed, Ed, Ed Lee Haynes. Haynes. Do you think he's still in town? No, he's oh, dead. He's dead. He's dead. Anybody lives like he did dies. <laughs> <laughs> now, did, you, did he try to get you to join up? Did he talk to you about it? I can't remember where he did or not, uh, but I think I let it know, let it be known when I went to work at the Columbus Manufacturing Company. I didn't want no part of the union. 
I believe they asked me that when I went to work. The, could be, because, you know, you went to work at such a volatile period mm -hmm. of time yeah. to be hired. Yeah, and a hard time to get a job, see, and, and they were they were looking for some good men, like the, like the U.S. Marines. They were looking for some good men, and I just happened up. I was at the right time and at the right place at the right time, and I got the job. Did they ask you? Did they talk to you about what was going on at the time and see wh which side you were on? Yes. Uh, whenever they uh, they told us that the strike was coming, they asked us, uh, "What was we going to do? Was we going to strike or were we going to work?" And I, I went nobody working at that time but me. I told them I was going to work if the if they run. And so I went into my job. And it it didn't run but just two or three hours they had to shut it down. And so the company shut it down and dismissed us and told us we'd be notified when to come back. How did they notify you when to come back? Uh, I, I, it was it wasn't by phone then because they wasn't very few many phones. <laughs> they had down. to it was just by mouth, you know, ear. Word of mouth. mouth. Ear. In other words, uh, everybody knew where Somebody knew where everybody lived, see, and they, they would just, whenever, there was a few people like the second hand and the overseer and the fixers, and they were key men in the plant. Well, they knew where, for instance, the section I worked on, that guy knew where I lived and he knew where everybody else lived on his job. And so he would he would bring them in like that. Did you live in mill housing at the time? No, we lived at that time. We lived uh, on uh, 26th Street and f right off First Avenue. And uh, we didn't live in the mill village at that time. In other words, uh, Columbus Mill didn't have too many houses. They just had a few houses. Mostly, all of them was for the. Um, like the fixers and uh, second hands and supervisors and so on, you know, they furnished the houses Office. for them. Office, Office people. Crew. So we didn't write. But after uh, I got to be supervisor, then I we went in for one and I got one. So we yeah. lived in a village. Now, in which community? Where was that? It was in the Columbus community. Right down from the Clouse Hill area. At 32nd Street. Street. Now, now, you're musicians, right? Yeah. You're both musicians. Both, both musicians. We, yeah. had, we had a band. We had a gospel group. When I was young, I had a, I had a country western band. Made like Bob Wills. Did you ever hear his records? Bob Wills. Yeah. No, I have Well, uh, uh, Texas Playboys. What's this guy that plays like him now? Uh, George Strait. George Strait. We had a, I had a band sound just like George Strait. Yeah. And they didn't have no electrical equipment and no all then, all that. We done it with the real cat guts. <laughs> now, were you playing music in the, in the 30s as well? Were you a musician then? No. Oh, yeah, I started playing when I had, I had about uh, 30. Anyway, did that the year I bought my banjo? No, it was about <laughs> 32, I believe. <coughs> You had your banjo when we came here. Yeah. I'd had it a long time. I went mm -hmm. to jail on it about it one time. <laughs> I had a hard time paying for it, and the man's going to take it back. I wouldn't let him have it, so he sent the, the constable over to serve me with a paper. I said, did I, did I take you or the banjo? And I said, I just took the paper and I throwed it down, and 4 o'clock next morning they put me in jail. With your banjo? No, I took that thing and hit it. <laughs> <laughs> they never did get it. They never it. did find it, but uh, I had a friend to get me out of jail the <laughs> next day, and uh, she got some crocodile tears in her eyes and got that constable to drop the uh, charges against me. <laughs> they got had me for re you know, resisting a, a subpoena. They had a subpoena to pick up the... Now, th I know that there, that there's there is there's some cotton mill songs that people used to sing, right? Songs about the cotton mill. Mm-hmm. We never did sing any of those. 
uh, he just played uh, country western music at that time. He played country western. It was called Hillbilly then. Yeah, the first when I first started it was called Hillbilly. And then it graduated yeah, to. Yeah, I, I started playing when I was at Gadsden. We would play. Uh, we we would drive to Birmingham, which is only about thirty miles, and play on WAPI every morning at five thirty, and uh, call the Moonlight Ramblers. The radio the, station. The radio station. What no TV? <laughs> and then uh, I played at WJBY at Gadsden, you know, with a church group. We had about twelve pieces in that church group, and we played there. On, I believe it was on a Saturday, and then uh, we played around schoolhouses, you know, put on plays and things like that. Until we, when I came down here, while we uh, I organized a band and called it the Smoky Mountaineers, and we taken it to Birmingham and played it to. Big auditorium. You ever been in that big auditorium nope. in Birmingham? Well, it's a huge thing. And we had that thing full. And we played, our band played and won first prize. Really? Yeah. That was back in 1938, 39, 39. And uh, we, then we came home, and uh, that band kind of broke up. We broke up for some reason, then I organized another band called it the Georgia Playboys. And that's when we went to play at this George Strait music, you know. Had that beach, you know. And we played dances, schoolhouses, first one thing about it. And played she would it, sing and played at WRBL for years and yeah, years. Yeah, we, we had did. a barn dance down there. I had it in the fight arena. Yeah, the police armory, you know, uh, yeah. it's a police station. They had a, upstairs, had a ring where they had prize fights. And we would broadcast from that, and the people to sit around, you know. So Watch it. In Nashville. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. I bet you did. No, I, like, I know that, on the, I even have a picture of it, that while people were on the picket lines, there was a lot of music going mm -hmm. on. And I wonder, you, you weren't playing uh, No, we wasn't in on that. Did you, did we you played, do? but we weren't in We that. played at barbecues and things like that during the summer months, you know, and sang, and, uh, but it wasn't during no strike or anything like that. We just uh, were involved in minstrels. You would have minstrels, you know, at the plant and all like that. But yeah, every Christmas we would put on a, a thing for the children and, uh, and the employees, you know, and I'd have my band to play. And at the uh, Fourth of July barbecue, yeah. we'd have a big barbecue and we'd play. Yeah, and out at the Hoochie like Reservation, that cat <laughs> fell off that stool again. I'm going to have to go When the solution fell off the stool. Did you, did, did you see that? I, just, uh, I heard it. Yeah, did you? <laughs> I didn't hear it. Did you see that? Uh, have you noticed that funniest video they show yeah, on TV? Yeah, uh -huh. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch him. I'm going to get a video of that and get me a... And they they pay you ten thousand dollars for something like they that. They will. Yeah. <laughs> and he just now rolled over. <laughs> and he when he hits the floor, he kind of looks startled. <laughs> he just cost you a lot of money, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. It just cost me a lot of money right there. <gasps> Him, my cat. So you played at these barbecues that yeah. were run by the mill. Mm-hmm. Right all by the plant. Every year we'd have a big barbecue at the, uh, after it changed. Well, while well, Bradley owned it, didn't he? Right. At the Uchi Reservation. There's a place yeah. out in Alabama that had a big uh, right. recreational place out there. So you went to Alabama from here? Yeah. Okay. In other words, but, uh, uh, we, well, uh, the, the lake was in Alabama. Uh -huh. see, and uh, we'd, we'd go out. The they'd have a big. It. Bradley Company owned it. And uh, they called the Uchi Reservation. And, and uh, it had two big lakes, but there's one over here that the where the employees could fish in. Boy, they were nice fish in there. And uh, that's where we put our barbecue on there. Had a, it had a, a, a nice... Uh, it had a, 
uh, it had a swimming pool, pool and a, a uh, pool and all kind of red shuffleboard and tennis and all like that, you know, and a big pavilion where you meal. could dance and all and. Did you, and you and you would play at these. Yeah, uh -huh. we had uh, played as elves. Fourth of July, it'd be all day. You know, we'd just have a big time. Now, were there any songs that you sang that that talked about continental people? No, we just sang old uh, love songs and things like that. <laughs> we were all happy. We <laughs> we were uh, all happy. We just. It was like a big family, you know. We were all happy. And I think that's one reason that uh, Columbus Mill uh, never did get involved with the uh, union because uh, they were like a family, you know, big family. They treated their help good and all like that. So you felt that there was no need to, uh, no, they to ask for anything mm -mm. different? Mm -mm. They'd give us our reses regularly, and we didn't need no union to but in with it. We didn't need to be paying nobody to tell us what to do because we knew what to do, go to work at work and then go home and behave yourself. And when it come time for us to get a raise, we got a raise. All the union mills, when it was come out in the paper, you know, the union is going to get a so-and-so raise here. We got one too. We got one too. They just played on the bulletin board. And, and so we wasn't paper. involved in. They would put the. They would say they. They would put up the article on the bulletin mm -hmm. board and then give you a raise. Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us every time, and uh, as over the years as things improved, why well, uh, they had more fringe benefits, you know, for the employees and all, and they had a, a nurse that the clinic that went around to the, especially in the. A village to watch after the sick people did that you, were sick. Did you ever hear of a man named Dr. Wynn, who was a doctor? Was he the Wynn. doctor there? Dr. Wynn? Uh, was he a uh, ear doctor? No, he's a general doctor. Uh, Wynn. I don't, uh, I don't think so. Who was there when we first came here, hon? The doctor? Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe he was there then. He might have been. But I, I know uh, whenever uh, Connor was there. And, and he Smith, wasn't the first one, though. Uh, uh, no. Uh, what was his name? Hmm. Three. He was there, but there was one before him. His It started with an S. His name started with an S, but I can't remember what his name was. It wasn't Bush, was no, it? he died, you know, he died, and that's when three come, when yeah. he died. But this nurse, we had a nurse uh, on two shifts. You know, I went on the first shift, went on the second shift, and then they'd always have somebody in the department that knew first aid in case somebody got hurt at night. But if it was, you know, severe, then the nurse was on call, we'd call her, and she would make the decision where the doctor would be needed or not. Did, what about, um, were there, did you know about illnesses that people got from working in the cotton mill, like, and from inhaling all the limbs? I don't uh, think the brown it. Lung. The I, I don't, I don't know of a case that, uh, right, right now I can't think of a one from the Columbus Mill, but I know they are some, I saw it in the paper, from the mill area here in town, if they were, they, you know, they were suing for, uh, like the coal miners, you know, the black line, and, and then the uh, textile is called the brown line. Well now, we, uh, I don't believe we ever was that, that, that filthy. You no, know, I don't think dusty. so. We because we, we kept that stuff wiped up pretty good. In other, other words, uh, we would call wiping the rope. In other words, where that stuff would settle down, every shift would wipe it up and put it in a, in a container. And then the floor 
we had sweepers, you know. They'd run, go around, out around, and get it. And they'd drag out one of those frames, keep it clean. But you couldn't keep it out of your hair because it was in the air, you know. But they finally got to where they wore, uh, some of them wore masks. And then when they had this humidity in there, you know, it cut it out a lot of that. It down a lot, and, uh, the dust. Uh, then they started using hearing uh, things to go in your ear to protect the... But when you started, there was none of that stuff. None oh, of that no. stuff, no, none yeah, of that. It was green when we started. It was all green, you know, so it was pretty rough. Like we said, you know, they was, it was sort of nice to then, but when... As over the years, it got better and better. You know, Farley has bought all this company over here now. Farley? Yeah. But he's, uh, With he the, took over, but he, I think he's wanting to the sell union, uh, now. What, what is this year? Underwear he, he makes? Fruit of the Loom. Oh, Fruit of the Loom. Uh-huh. What's his name? What's his first name? I can't think of his first name. His last name's name. Farley, but Farley. anyway, he... He took, made a hostile takeover of West Point. That was last year, I believe it was. He bought up 95% of the, of the holdings, but he never was able to, to get enough money to buy that other 5%. And that bonding company that he was uh, using, a certificate, I think it wasn't bonding. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that it was bonds. <laughs> But they they went they went belly up. See, uh, in other words, he he got his promise for his uh, financing through that, and then before he got his deal worked out good, it bellied up. See, some of the one of the guys I got Dutch. Well, I think I we said we the uh, they never did uh, have any union in in the company. I believe they have in some of the companies in other places. They've got... Not in Westport Pepperell. They shut it down. Did they? They made it, yes, sir. What's now this? They would shut it down if they had a good... Uh, they'd shut the company down before, yeah. they, before they had have a union. shut the company down and ship the machinery somewhere else. They were determined to keep the union out. They and they paid just they paid just like the union did. They paid just as much as the union paid. They didn't want nobody telling them how to run their job. See, whenever you got a union, that stewardess, he's gonna he's gonna run this floor and keep it under control. See, and 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 West Point Pepper, they never was for that period, and I never was for it either myself. Did they, um, and if those people that did want to join the union, what happened to their jobs? That, uh. that, did, that did want to join? Yeah. Well, uh, sooner or later, well, we found something else for them to do with some, some other plan. <laughs> they was, uh, somehow or other, they would In always other words, find... Uh, Something. Uh, what would happen they let them go. was that if we had somebody who was just de determined to organize my department, well, what I would do, I would talk to my superior and tell him what was going on. And he said, well, just leave it to me. And what he would do, he would keep me informed what to do. And, and for instance, that fellow better not spit in the floor, or drop any chalk, or drink too much water, or, or ask for too much, too many convenience, you know, like a pass to the gate and so forth. If he did, you'd, you'd, you'd write a warning slip on him, you know. And whenever you get two or three of those, you can move the fellow out. And you'd want to move one like that out because all he is after is trying to get you mixed up in something other you're not interested in. They could keep it pretty well under control. Yeah. You know, I, I... You had to work on it hard all the time. You, had, you couldn't let... You couldn't slack up a minute. You just had to stay right on top of it all the time. Do you know, since you were in management, do you know about efficiency experts? Do I know about the efficiency yeah. experts? Could you tell me about that? 
Well, in what way are you talking now? Of I know I I was I was I've read a little that um I've been told that they would bring people when they wanted to um you know better production mm -hmm. they would bring people in that were watching who could oh I guess a, a checker yeah a checker oh yeah our son-in-law was one of those they uh, called him a, a a minute man minute man. Well, yeah, they they would time you on how long it'd take you to stop the bob and get the string wow. and fight it out. And uh, in other words, if you drug around too long, why they would show you a better way where you could do it faster. And then that that went along with the stretch out. See, whenever you got where you could do that faster, then you'd be able to take on more job. But they didn't give you those more more frames without more money. Anytime they give you more job, they give you more money. So they wouldn't have loading up on you like they, but it, to the people, it was a stretch out system, you know. They didn't want to accept it, nothing, only a stretch out. They didn't think about the money. The money would come if you run the job. They had a, a hank clock on the end of the frame. And you got paid this is with a different hand. than the Minuteman now. This is the yeah, ticket system. Is, uh, well, this uh, this is different from Minuteman, but you got you you got to keep your frames running. You can't let them get the balled up and have to stop them all because you won't be getting no hanks on that. You get paid with the hank. I've That's had the way that that paid for a long time. I've had them Minutemen to follow me all day long on my job and uh, see everything that I done. Put it down. How long Everything, it took what it took, uh, how long it took went me to, to do. Went to the bathroom. They put it down to the bathroom. Yeah, and absolutely. How many gone? When was this? It was uh, uh, about forty-five. It was before they put me on the instructor's job, and then when I went on the instructor's job, I had a stop clock that I used in instructing. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't compulsory, but I would time the girls to see, see how they how they improve. was making progress, how they were progressing on the she had learning. Make a, uh, make a survey of that and turn it in every night. And so, uh, they wasn't no. Uh, they didn't have these many men to um, push you or anything like that, but they were seeing what you could do and how they could better advantage the work, you know, and how they could increase the production efficiency, well, as you were saying. Efficiency is what you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, efficiency. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times you uh, will be, we'll say, goofing off when you really don't uh, know that you're goofing off. And if somebody's with you, see, you'll pay more attention to what you're doing. And uh, I just, when I had one, I always took my time. I didn't rush around. I just took my time and done my work, just like I always did. But I was more conscious of making each minute count. Right, and by doing that, it made her efficiency much higher. Yeah. So that's what they were doing that for. And they if were, you do that a few times, you know, then you'll automatically do it. You won't have to have somebody watching you. You'll realize that what you've been doing is wrong and you want to do it, you know, the better way. I said they used me as a guinea pig in a lot of things, you know, that uh, I don't know why they did it, but if they ever had, uh, they'd send these um, men from college, you know, to train. Georgia Tech. From you know, Georgia Tech, there. you know, and uh, I've had uh, men that went on to become presidents, vice presidents, and managers of companies to be with me when they come out of college, and I'd teach them how to put up the ends. That's what I've done then is put up the ends and spin. I'd teach them how to do that, and I'd teach them how to do everything. And uh, it's a, a stand called a stand. That's two, four, six rollers. Okay, you flip them things up, and then rollers raise up. 
she show him how to take them things up, take the rollers out, clean them off, put them back in, and clamp it back down. And then showed him how to put up the ends. And, and she'd put him on the end of a frame down there, and, he, and he'd just tear them down and put them up. So he got so he where he could do it. He could just do it with his eyes shut nearly. And, and that fella went on to be over 35 plants. He was a head, head honcho over 35 plants. So uh, they were a whole lot of the college graduates that come, and they'd bring them to me. I never did use any bad language or anything like that. I'm not trying to hand in, put any flowers on my shoulder. But I never did talk ugly or anything like that. And a lot of people, you know, they just use by words and all like that. And I guess they felt like that the men could respect me because I was like that. And so they'd always end up with me. And I talked so many until when they uh, started hiring instructors to train spinners. Well, I guess they thought of me. They thought of all of them that I had taught for free, and they decided to pay me for instructing them. So that's what I was doing when I quit. It sounds like your experience in the mill is very unique compared to most mill people. Yes, uh, it, it, it was. Uh, in other words, I've done a little bit of everything in a, in a textile plant. I, from, from fanning the big alley, you know, just, just fan it with a broom, keeping the cotton out of it. To picking up bobbins, that's the thing that the yarn works on. Then I, uh, from uh, dumping quills, to laying up rolling, that's just big stuff that comes from the card room. And then uh, running a bobbin machine, that's taking off what didn't run off in the frame. Just run it through there, and uh, a quill machine that leaves that little bunch on there. I run that thing, you know, and it pull that thing off. I, for instance, everything in the plant, just about, I have run. I have ran it a little enough to be. Well, that's why I got to be supervisor. You know, I, I had the know-how. If I couldn't do it, you know productive, I knew how it was supposed to be done, and I could tell somebody how to do it that had, you know, that had some experience. Uh, it, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful life. I, I wouldn't take nothing for it. If I live till September the 24th, I'll be 80 years old. You look incredible. Yes, thank you. And I, I'm 76. Incredible. <laughs> how do you ha well, how do you stay looking so good? Well, we just serve the Lord. We work in the church, and, you know. Now we. You know, we just took. It. She told you we was going to funeral. Yeah. Is she what you called this morning? Yeah. Did she tell you we was going to funeral too? And it was a friend of ours, it's a lifetime friend. He used to work for me. His wife worked for me when I was supervisor. His brother worked for me. His daddy worked for me. His uh, aunt worked for me. Uh, just a, a whole generation, just about. His sister-in-law worked for me. But we buried him today. And, uh, he was just 61. He was just 61 years old. What did he die of? He had a heart attack. Had a heart attack. Heart massive several heart attack. massive heart. Attack. Had had one massive heart attack. Then he had. They thought they had him on the recovery list, and then he had three more, one right after the other, rupture. He owned a he owns a, a realty company. You know. Yeah, he so he, he got, got out of the mill. Yeah, he got out. Yeah, of the he mill got out of the mill. He saved his his pennies, and. You know, uh, that's a good story there. Now, if you talk about somebody from a, from a textile mill, he was a, what you might say, a big alley man, just keep things set up and set around. He went from that to uh, 
peddling, had a truck, go to the farmer's market, he'd get vegetables. Early in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, he would load his truck up with all the fresh vegetables he could get, get on it. And then he, by the time he'd get back home and get his breakfast, it was time then to make his tour around through Columbus area. He had a route, a regular route. A regular route, and they looked for him. And he made money at that. Uh, you know, it wasn't much now, but then it was a lot of money. For instance, he'd make a hundred dollars a day, and now uh, he he makes two or three thousand dollars a day. Well, he started uh, he started buying old uh, houses that needed that's to that's be moved, you know, and he'd buy them and move them somewhere and renovate them and then sell them, and he built his business up like that. So he's got a thriving business. This is the man who died. The one that died. Yeah. And he left uh, it to his wife and all this. She's going to be lost without him. She was so pathetic at the funeral. And his grandchildren made a tape, and they played the tape for the music. Did, have you One ever of the, heard the, uh, let's see, what is uh, The Rambos. The Rambos and their tapes. And no, I haven't. Well, it's, it's beautiful. Well, kind of like the, uh, 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 what is this other trio that sings so popular in King's gospel music? Trio. No, uh, he writes a lot of songs, very popular. So that's what these kids did? Uh-huh. Yeah, they made that tape, and uh, one of the girls wrote two songs. In honor of her daddy? Uh, and one of them, the last one, her husband sang it on the tape. They were on the tape, see? And, uh, it was uh, welcome home, my child. It fit right in with the, you know, the funeral. It was so beautiful. It was beautiful. I, I really to start with, I thought it was a Rambo's professional yeah. group. They were I so good. I asked her. I said, "Is that is that the kids are singing?" I knew they had sang with me some, and uh, we've sang with them at church. And first one thing another, and they 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 sounded so good. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. Are you in touch with other with Cottonville people today? Oh yes, we just saw one of her buddies over there. That uh, we don't. I mean, we don't. We don't. Or we're not friends like bosom buddies or anything like that. We see them occasionally, and uh, we have one that goes to the same church. In other words, he was over the instruction crew, you know, and he goes. Telling me about Mr. Jay's, your retirement group. Yeah, your yeah, a retirement yeah. group. It's, I believe the last time we was up there, there was about sixty of us that had, a, had a meal up there. Yeah, and we have, uh, you know, we go to the good get together in Cooper Creek Park. Sometimes, you know, a park out here, and each one carries a covered dish, and we just talk about things of the past, you know, and have a good time. Now, are these all people that were working with you in management? Yeah, no, Not necessarily, uh, just in the... Uh, the general employees. Just general employees, some, some of them. Some of them worked in management. But, you know, uh, there ain't many in management, you know. Whenever you're talking about that, you're only talking about four or five, six people that's over in one plant. And it don't take long to, uh, you know, if you have 40 or 50 people together, well, you've got to have some of these regular, regular employees. Another thing, a lot of our uh, comrades that we worked with in management are, uh, have already passed on. Yeah. There's so many that have, I, I think about that so much, you know, because uh, we are very fortunate you know, because we have lived to be this age. I won't say old age, but uh, there's so many of the others that have already passed on. 
And uh, while we were working in Alabama, we went to Alabama, you know, and worked four years in the ministry after we retired from the plant and traveled the state in revivals. And uh, uh, I was mission director, and he was a marker uh, secretary. And so uh, we traveled the state, run revivals, and uh, went to different churches, you know, and all. And uh, so when we came back, there were some of them that had already passed on. And then since we have we come back. We were asking about they had died while we were gone. We were gone four right. Years. We was gone four years. Long time. And then we uh, pastored a little church over here in Phoenix City for a couple of years after we came back. And uh, so we didn't have, you know, too much time to spend coming over here because we were busy in the church work. But we finally moved over here. So I, I'm looking to talk to people, you know, who were sort of, um, who were um, who were involved in the industry, and who were involved in this period of time in the '30s from both sides. You know, people that yeah. people that didn't strike and people who did. Do you know yeah. any people who did that I could talk to? No, right off, I don't. All right. Most of them don't die. <laughs> <laughs> well, the. You might run across some sometime, but I don't know. We just don't what know any of them. What you do is move us up about 10 years. You were getting back <laughs> in the 30s, you know, you didn't need to move it up to about the 40s. Well, there wasn't too much uh, riots then, were they, you know, in the 40s and all that that we did. That was the war, you know. And uh, people were trying to work for the country, you know, and all like that. Were you frightened um, during that period of time when you were living, when you just moved in and you started working? Well, I never been. I really never been scared of nothing much, you know, uh, because. Uh, but we were uneasy for, about. For instance, uh, I didn't want. I, when I went out, I watched out, and you know, and, and didn't get involved in nothing. And if everybody would have played it that way, it would have been a whole lot better. And a lot of people just wanted to get involved. You know, they just wanted something other. You know, that's all he had to do. Didn't have television back then. <laughs> now, if my brother was living, he could tell you some big stories, but he's gone. He what what happened to your brother? He, uh, he, died. he knows all, all about Columbus and the bad parts of it and the strikes and all, you know. I don't know if he was ever involved in any of them or not, but he uh, knew people that were. You, but he's been dead for years. What did you think about Talmadge, Eugene? Eugene Talmadge. Talmadge. Well, the old man, he was a pretty good old fellow. <laughs> you know, he 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 was governor how many times? Two or three times, wasn't he? Four, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, he believed in uh, and everybody having a job, but he didn't believe in paying too much. He would. He came up whenever, you know, a dollar was a dollar. You know, today you can have a dollar and you ain't got nothing. Uh, for instance, I know a fella that one time retired from that mill where I was a child. He retired. I can't remember his name. It seemed like he's Wilson. But anyway. And he had fifty thousand dollars saved up. And back then, fifty thousand dollars, you were rich. Fifty thousand dollars was a lot of money. But today fifty thousand dollars is pocket change. Now not that I have fifty thousand, but <laughs> my friends, I got some friends that's got fifty thousand. And if they if I need it I get it. But the thing of it is, I, I don't want to need the more than I, than I can spend, you know. Somebody knock me in the head and take it away from me. But this feller, he retired on that $50,000. Today, whenever a man's talking about retiring, he, he's got to have something like a, a million dollars or a half a million at least before he can think about retiring. Because as high as everything is, you you spend right? just me and her. We spend uh, thirty or forty thousand dollars a year 
just keeping everything going. And uh, we do save a little, but not much. But that's for, for But that man was very rare, Mr. Wilson. Yeah. Right. Most he, he people was, didn't retire from uh -huh. the mills like that, did they? Well, yeah, back then they did, because that was it was uh, that was a lot of money you could buy. You could oh, buy this house here for thirty-five hundred dollars. Built like this, you could buy it for thirty-five hundred dollars. I'm talking about over there in Alabama now. But today, you can't touch this house for less than fifty, sixty thousand dollars. You know. And, uh, and the man would have to be needing the money to sell it for that. But then, whenever he had that fifty thousand, see, and he would he wasn't taking much to carry him on, and he was getting an age. Well, he said he had enough to do him the rest of his life, and I I, I don't doubt what he did. I don't remember what happened to him because he left, you know, whenever he retired. But that was a lot of money back in those days, fifty thousand dollars. For instance, whenever they paid him, like they paid him like eight or ten thousand dollars a year to be that head honcho, and where they was paying me uh, five hundred dollars a year or two fifty, something like that. Um. You were talking about low wage, low wages. wage, and low wages. It was low wages, Gail, I tell you. It was real low. When I first went to work, uh, I made two dollars a week. A week. Yeah. Can you imagine that? And I w it went up to four dollars, and I thought I was rich. And then when I went to work at uh, West Point Pepper, you know, at Columbus Mill, I think I made about six dollars. Yeah, it's better what you made because I only made nine sixty. Mm -hmm. That was for a week, but we could take uh, a couple of dollars that and buy groceries to us a week. Yeah. We could rent a house, and uh, it cost us a dollar a month rent, dollar and a half. And uh, a nice house. Our uh, light bill was say ninety five or a dollar. Yeah, we, we found a stub the other day. I, we got it stuck back in a book somewhere. It showed it was, it was the bill for, I believe it was 80 or 90 cents. No, it was $2 and something, but it was long enough. Uh, I think it was about in 46, somewhere in that time. And, and, and we, got our, we got our electric bill set up on a budget here at $45. Average about forty-five dollars a month now. Now, what did was a company store that that, mm -hmm. that the mill had? Yeah. Did you shop in that? Yeah, we uh, shopped in that store. They was not a company store at uh, Columbus. Well, it could have been called a company store. The man that owned it, it didn't right belong now. to the company, but he uh, ran it. Through the company. Through the company, you know. In other and, words, uh, he would, he would uh, give you, a, you could go get a dollar's worth of old Googaloos, you know, on your time. And you could buy groceries from his store with that. What, a Googaloo is, is like script? Yeah, yeah just a little old, a round little, little, little metal round thing. Aluminum. Did you save any of those? No, no. <laughs> we didn't save any of those. Either. We should have, but we didn't. Yeah, been, who would have thought we was going to live this long? <laughs> <laughs> we used to borrow a dime to go to a movie. We wouldn't have a dime to go to a movie, and so we'd borrow a dime to go to a and movie. Walk up there, and back. And walk. This is in Alabama. Oh, that's over here. That was in Columbus when we first came. Wasn't it hard taking care of two kids and both working? Yeah, yeah. it was hard. Well, I had we had to work on one shift at one time. Well, we didn't uh, know anything but that, so I don't guess it was hard for us because mm -hmm. that's all we knew, you know. It was a way of life with us. And so. Did you see each other much? 
Well, we said, hey, <laughs> coming and going. <laughs> he, he'd be in the bed, uh, you know, when I got home from work at night. I worked on the second shift, and he'd be in the bed. And then we changed when he went into supervisor's work. Why, we changed right opposite. I worked on the first shift, and he worked on the second. So it was the same thing until our uh, boy got grown, you know, and when he got grown, I, I went on the first shift too, or went on the same shift with him on the second shift because he stayed on there until about how many years before we retired? 28 years. They told me yeah. when I went on a second shift, I said, I don't want a second shift job. No way. He said, oh, it won't be with two or three weeks. We'll have you on the first shift. But he stayed on that years line. later, they told me, said, you could go on the first shift. <laughs> 28 so years all that later. time. Now, did you ever put up a fuss and, and uh, try no. to change Yeah, things? every time, every time the head, every time the, the manager would come through, he would look her up on, on her shift and say, uh, Bessie, I'm going to move Ernest on the first shift just as soon as I can. Said, mm -hmm. I don't want you to give up now. Said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work a place for it. And it wouldn't nobody die that, you know, <laughs> out of my way where I could move up. <laughs> One time it was so funny, you know, uh, I was on the first shift and he was on the second shift. And this man that I was working for, he run the same job that he'd run, you know. And, uh, so we were real praying people, you know, we believed in prayer. And this, uh, we prayed for Ernest to get a job on the first shift because he wanted to be involved with music and singing, wanted to go to church with me and all. And so this man, my boss, got real sick. In other they words, give him up they, to die. they give him up to die. And so we began to pray for that man to get well. We didn't want him to die so he could, you know, we thought maybe, well, we was praying so hard for him to get a, a first shift job that we was. The Lord was fixing the fix it for us. Well, we didn't so want it we way. didn't want it that way. So we changed our prayer and said, Lord, not like that. So we began to pray for the man. It was sort of strange, and you know, but it worked out. Well he did. Work. He come back to work. How many years later did it take from that yeah, for you to get out of about the first shift? About three more. He worked about three more years, and then he uh, really he did. retired, and I moved up. So, see? <laughs> See, the Lord will work it out if you'll hold out. You've got to hold out for the Lord. That's really funny. That's <laughs> yeah, it very, is. Very funny. It's fun. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate um, you talking to me. Well, I hope we said something that will be of some help to you. Do you work for the... Uh, I, wor I, I work with a man who teaches at a place called New York University. And, and we're... Um, making this documentary film about the textile industry in the 30s and the general strike. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've been looking for musicians. Yeah. Well, well they have... Two, uh, you found two good ones right here. You see that empire sitting over there? Yeah. Uh, well, I've got a Stratocaster Fender in this pantry over a there. A Stratocaster Fender? Uh-huh. Yeah, guitar. Oh. And she plays the piano, and we've got a keyboard sitting in there. Oh, uh, well, we've had the uh, ledger to come out and take pictures of us with our music. When our children were little, we got a picture of us uh, singing at that time. I played the piano and he played the guitar. And then uh, they came out and interviewed us one time when we had a group that we sang with. And uh, we had our picture in the West Pointer. That was our paper, you know. West Pointer paper, and then after we retired, they came out and uh, interviewed us and take a picture of us when we were pastor in the church in Alabama. Yeah. There, there we are up there. Yeah, that's Probably. when we were pastor in the church over there. Do, um, do you know a song, Springtime in the Rockies? Yeah. Yeah. We used to sing that, Springtime in the Rockies. When the white azaleas start blooming, let me call you, sweetheart. Can you sing it for me? 
acapella? Uh, in the uh, springtime in the yeah. Rockies. We hadn't sang that in a long time. I don't. Can, do you remember? That was a song that they were singing then, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When it's springtime in the Rockies, I'll be coming back to you. I can't remember. Sing it over. Yeah, I can't remember it. But it was. Blue. Once again I'll say I love you while the birds sing all the day. When the springtime in the rock is, in the rock is far away. There you go. I, and that's sweet to say you start blooming. I just uh -huh. give her a verse of that. When the white azaleas start blooming, I'll be coming back to you. When the spring's in the air with its fragrance so fair, You should have warned me. I didn't know you wanted me to sing. I can't think of the words to them. Now, do you remember? You must have heard that song that, that they were singing. Uh, uh, cotton no, cotton no woman, cotton no girl. I've heard it, but I don't know it. I've well, heard it, cotton no girl. I heard the one about uh, Mary Faggot. You know, she. Uh, that was. A she worked factory. at a pencil factory, yeah. though. She worked in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Mm. Well, it's getting on there, and I don't want to take yeah. up too much more of your time. Yeah, well, well, uh, thank you very, very much. We're, we're uh, glad to we've enjoyed you you to talking help. to you. Um, uh, there's a chance that we might be coming back to Columbus. Um, I, I'd be accompanied with, with some other friends. Yeah. And um, maybe if it was okay with you, uh, maybe we could come back with a camera and a tape recorder. Would that be okay? That'd be all right. And if you would uh, let us know in advance, sure, you know, maybe we could, if you ask us to sing something, if you specified what song it was, maybe we could practice it and, you know. we See, we haven't sung any of those songs so long. We've been involved in gospel uh -huh. music and all. Yeah, well, I know that people, I was told that, like, you've been to, you know, Bib City, where it mm -hmm. yeah. Now, do you, did you ever go out there, like, on Friday or Saturday nights, people singing on the porches? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We used to do that. Yeah, we used, we used to, to sing on the porches. I, and I'd get in a rocking chair with, uh, with, with one of the kids, and uh, maybe both of them, and, and, and rock and sing, and her sitting in a swing, swinging. We'd sing. Swing mm -hmm. and sing, you know. After it the sun real, went down, real, you know, we didn't real. have anything was, to do. That was what we had for our entertainment back in those days. There wasn't no television. We had a radio, but we'd listen to Love and Abner. We got tired of it. I remember the first yeah, time we. Days, I remember the first time we bought a radio. We had a little radio, you know, and nobody on the street where we lived had one, and so we'd play it at the, you know, real loud, so it, all of our neighbors could hear it. Is this yeah. in Columbus? No, that was when we lived in Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> they would give us a ticket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was one of them little old round top things, that, uh, and back when Nashville started. And we'd, we'd pick up Nashville on Saturday night, and they would sit out on the porch. He want us to rev it up. Yeah, so, so they could hear it, see. people had a radio. And, and, and brother, we, we managed around to get one somehow. Not all, I don't right remember, remember now how we got it, night. but we did. <laughs> and uh, we were, you know, people visited with each other more then, and we never did lock our doors or anything like that. And... You know, it was just so much different what it is now. Um, woman, before I go back, back to the strike, I just do you recall, um, yellow dog? Con I think they were called yellow dog contracts. It was like the company would say, "I'll hire you 
I'll hire you if you sign this and you swear that you'll never join the union. Did they? Uh, I never was approached for that myself. We've heard of it, but that's about all. Did, uh, did a lot of people get blacklisted afterwards? Not many. Very few. Now, here's one thing that would happen. If you worked at a, at a union mill and you came over to Oklahoma's mill to get a job, uh, they would ask you these questions on your application. Like what? Like, did you belong to the union over there? And if you said yes, you might as well listen to the hush right there because that's the end of it. If you said no, you would be questioned concerning that answer. And uh, because that's why they didn't want a union in there telling them what to do because they paid like the union was paying at our mill. And some of the other mills weren't doing that. And we, I was taught that and from day one that we did not want no unions in there. And if I knew of one, to let them know. And so they kept that to themselves if they were one. Some of them toted cards, you know. And, uh, but I never did ask them to let me see them. I told them, as long as they run their job and didn't try to sell nobody else, it was okay. But it, uh, a lot of people think how it, it, the union helps them. In a way, it does, and then another way, it it starves them to death because they lose more money every time they strike than they gain whenever they get what they ask for. Now these uh, automobile companies, you know, they they all belong to the union, and that uh, what is that Teamsters thing and the longshoremen, all that. Well. Well, those steel it, mills. It might be steel mills, same way. Round in Birmingham when we were in the work, it, you know. It, they'd it, it might be, it might be all right. I never worked at one of those places now. It may be different there, but where I was working, it was, it was wrong. It was better the way I was doing it. But you know, when we was in that work in Alabama for the church, and we had to have, the steel mills would have those uh, strikes and uh, mining mines, they would strike, and uh, a lot of those people went to the churches we were visiting, and we would hear about it, see, and uh, I, I never would take, take some. They would be home. suffering, too, you yeah, know. they would be suffering. For uh, finance, financially. you know. Financially, and, uh, you know, uh, wherever they buy their groceries, by the week or the month, that fella can only carry you so long. Directly, you gotta you gotta pay your bill. He can't let you have mm -hmm. nothing else. He'll be out of business. I um. Well, I guess you know there was some of the unions I think were trying to give. Sometimes there was relief. Mm -hmm. of yeah, yeah there was some. Relief. Yeah. Well, that's what I we said. We we don't know too much about it because. Most all we know is hearsay, you know, because we wasn't ever involved in it. Yeah, I've, I've heard them remark, you know, that, uh, like, say, for instance, Bib, the union had uh, so many hundred thousand dollars in the treasure to take care of the people while they were out on strike. Okay? And what they would do, they would give them. They would give them a, a certain amount of money each week, the ones that was true to the to the union. But those people that didn't belong, they the one that suffered, because they wouldn't give them no money. But yet they couldn't work because the job was shut down, and that's where it's it's bad. It's it's, it's, it's it needs to be everybody belong or, or nobody. I heard that um in some unions, I mean in some uh of the mills, they would get, they would hire employees to go out and guard the mills. Well, yes, I've heard we that had, too. Uh, we've had, uh, what you say, a security guard. We, we've had a few over there at Columbus Mill, but what we were doing was at, keeping at some of those, yeah, keeping those 
over here. Keeping those people from coming in here and maybe going there bumming the place or, you know, or setting it on fire or something like that because we weren't union, trying to force us to. Did you do that? No, they didn't do it. That's why we had these security guards right. around. No, but did they, did they ask, did they hire, did, did men that were working in the plant yeah, go they, out and stand they, outside themselves? They used, they used men that they knew could, they could trust. And uh, and they wore guns and they were swore in, deputized. In other words, they could arrest you, yeah. they could shoot you, if you do, you know if you done anything mean, and uh, all of that stuff. Who of course, nobody them? never had to do it. <laughs> Who deputized them? Uh, the sheriff. Yeah, I've seen I've seen um, I, I saw a movie, some newsreel footage. Out in Macon, mm. not far from here, right? but out mm -hmm. away, and it shows actually all these men being yeah. deputized yeah. by yeah. a sheriff, right on the movie. Right, right, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's the way they that's the way they do. And see, whenever we uh, we'd hire these fellows uh, now over there, since we've left, they have hired a security card company, which they they furnish somebody on each shift regular to to take care of the. Uh, security around there. But back when we were doing it, we hired our own men. And they would have, have to take them to the sheriff's office, get them debitized to where they could, uh, you know, have authority. Now this was in, that this was July, August, September, that whole stretch oh, of time. Well, that was, uh, that was, uh, that was all the time here, yeah, all the time I was here up till I retired. They were hiring their own security guards. And they was usually handpicked from the plant, you know, because uh, they could put somebody out there they, they could trust. But now these security guards are under bond, and uh, they could trust him. <coughs> yeah. Well, well that's, that's, that's about it, dear. Thank you very, very, very much. <coughs> okay, what yeah. was it? What do you know about... The, the beauty queens from the mills. Oh yeah, we used to have beauty contests at the plant. We really did, and uh, they would. Uh, uh, we got one in there. Yeah. A, a view dressed up in that. Yeah, we got a picture. Oh, we had that was the woman's club though. Well, you were dressed up at night to where I, I sang at. Somebody stole my gas. Oh, that was. Uh, and, that uh, was in the song. In that the was a minstrel. We had an yeah. old timey minstrel, you know, in the woman's club. But uh, we had a beauty contest. Remember? All the mills uh, got yeah. together and, and uh -huh. put in their um... right, and uh, went down to the uh, the winners went down to the uh, uh, what do you call it? Springer House. Uh, Municipal Auditorium. Oh yeah. And uh, they had a to do down there. But I never did make that. I was that pretty. <laughs> I didn't make that, but uh, I had some friends that did, and uh, one of our girls, uh, she won, but she didn't go out of Columbus. She just won, you so know. She, what is she? What was that called? Miss Cotton? Uh, what was? She? I think it was called Miss Columbus Mill. Yeah, you I found a picture yeah, of that today. Yeah, name it. Uh, whatever mill you are from, that was uh, your title. Uh, they had Thomas one from mill, Miss Bibb City. Bibb and, City, uh, 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 Phoenix, Eagle Phoenix, and uh, so forth and so on. Right? You know, uh, Thelma Hubbard, you know, she, she won. Yeah. And Nell Cast, she was in it. Oh, you remember? Yeah, I remember. Here you go. Now, Cast is dead, but yeah. See if I remember. I don't believe we have one like that. Uh-uh. This like is that. in, uh, I don't remember whether, I don't believe I have one of them. Yeah. I'm not sure. Because but we had you, some uh, pictures. I don't believe we went because you didn't win. Textile beauty. Yeah. Textile queen. Yeah, textile queen. Uh, we had um, a minstrel, you know, 
uh, like I said, at the auditorium, we had a big arena. Uh, auditorium. Auditorium at the plant, you know. And uh, the woman's club had a, a minister, and we dressed up as black people, you know. And uh, had an old timey minister and sang uh, black people songs, and we had skits and things like that. And I've got a picture of that. You know, a big picture of it. And I've, I've, I, that's the time I had on that. He was a city slicker. City slicker with a little round hat, you know, and I saw him, somebody stole my gal. And he had a cane, and you know, oh, it is cute. It was real cute. It, yeah. it, you needed some video back in them days. Yeah. There wasn't, uh, <laughs> wasn't even no tapes back in there. Were black people working in your mill then? Oh, yeah. Uh, long in. 34 and 35 and all in there. They uh, were mostly sweepers. sweepers, just sweepers, you know, they had the, uh... Care service. Yeah, janitorial service. But, but I, uh, I trained uh, black girls and uh, Japanese girls and all kind of nationality when I was instructing them. Later, uh, later Before on. Before I right. left up there, I, was, uh, I had some colored boys, dolphins. Right. And they were good too. In fact, the colored people seemed like they were more anxious to please you than the white people were. It uh, that I trained, most of them were. They was real cooperative, you know, and learned. Some of them was kind of slow, but uh, the ma biggest majority of them was real smart. You know, I I, I came across the, a name of a parson, Parson Jack Johnston. Yeah. No Did you know about him? Yeah, oh. we know about him. Parson Jack. Parson Jack. He, yeah. he debated uh -huh. with our pastor. Mm hmm Sure did. Right there on 30, 32nd Street. You know, sure did. Yeah. What was what was what was his what did he do? What was his He was um He was a Baptist He was a Baptist minister and our uh, pastor, you know, was Church of God, and they uh, debated the scriptures, you know. He was pastor of a church, and our pastor was pastor of a church. Some of the, did, were some of the uh, mills and some of the churches connected to each other? They were a lot of the people that, uh, you know, uh, worked in the mills that were in the churches. Yeah, uh, a lot of people that worked in the for me went to the church where I went to church at. Of course, I didn't get to go to church much because I worked on the second shift. But they didn't expect any more out of me, and I didn't expect any more out of them if we didn't go to It didn't create church. a problem at all. Uh, in the older mill villages in the 20s, that sometimes the, the, the mills built the church, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like they did a village. They, they built a village for their employees. And, they, and in the meantime, they throw up a little church for them, too. I think that in Bibb City, didn't they? I think they built that for uh, I don't know. Uh, it's name, it's a Port of Memorial ba uh, Baptist yeah, Church. I, I, I think Seemed like that man was a, a, a prominent person in the mill. Probably was. I'm not sure, but I believe he was. And it's still up there. But you know, whenever... I went in the gate to go to work. You had a fence around it. Yeah. I left my personal things outside. I, when I went inside the gate, I was for the company till I went back out the gate. In other words, I was working for them. I was their employee. They paid me. But when I went back outside the gate, I was earnest. I played for me. <laughs> we have a, a friend well, she belongs to our church. That is the, what is she, the mayor's secretary or what of Bibb City? She is a city manager. City manager of Bibb City. Her name is uh, Scoggins. Scoggins. Judy Scoggins. Judy Scoggins. Judy Scoggins, right. So she must know lots of folks in Bibb City. Yeah, she right. is a secretary and city manager to the mayor. Mm -hmm. They have their own mayor in Bibb City? Mm-hmm. Sure do. And she's a nice person. Yeah. Her husband uh, was uh, 
He's got a video company. Yeah, he's got a video company, and he he was with uh, two or three of the stations, you know, here yeah, TV he stations. He's uh, well, he still fills in at one of them when the guys are on vacation when they need him. He's a sports director. Yeah. Yeah, Phil Scoggins. Phil Scoggins. He's they're real precious, uh, you know. And he he worked with Callaway for two or three years. He quit the the uh, TV station and went to work for Callaway. Channel Three. Callaway run the TV station. No. Uh, Callaway he, Callaway Guards, you know. You've been up there, haven't you? Not yet. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> that's a nice place. <laughs> but uh, that's a that's a that's a sweet as they just start blooming up there. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Idle Hour Park? Well now, uh, it's in Phoenix City in yeah, Alabama. Yeah, across the creek. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, used to be, it used to be my stomping ground. Yeah, <laughs> we had a lot of good times over there. Was that where a lot of mill folk went? Yeah. Yeah. I had a had a had a, a dance arena out there, and I played yeah. at that place. You know. And so bowling the, alleys and all like that. Of course, it's changed you know, a lot uh, now. Uh, you know. Uh, it, lay, uh, uh, what, what a pool, you know, a swimming pool. Now, when we first come, Phoenix City was rough. Ooh we didn't spend too much time in Phoenix City because it was rough. He had you know, a bad in name. Five is whenever they clamped down on it over there. It was a regular. Uh, I felt kind of nervous every time I went to Phoenix City. Did you ever see that movie Three Faces of Eve? Yeah. Well, now that picture was made in Phoenix City. And in fact. Uh, uh, there was a lot of the things that was in it in Phoenix City, and uh, about Phoenix City. It was a uh, Phoenix City. In fact, when we first went to Alabama from Georgia, in the church work, the first convention we attended, somebody said, "Oh, Brother Hannah, y'all are uh, from Sin City." They called it Sin City, you know. We were driving a new car, and they said. How long did it take you to work up to that? <laughs> <laughs> they was teasing us, you know, but uh, that's what they called the. But it is pretty something to start in the mill as a simple mill hand. Yeah. Yeah. Up in a supervisor position and live in a mm -hmm. house like this, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Well, we, I, we're, I, we're real fortunate. We and sure that, are. We we had we were we were treated well. We were treated well, but. Any company that cares anything about the company, any if a, well, I don't know hardly how to say this, but any company that cares anything about their employees will treat them well if they will work and run a efficient job. But they're not going to keep you on the payroll just because you're good looking, or or you know, or your name's. Uh, Jack Johnson or something, but you run a job and they'll give you a benefit and they'll train you, let you help you to do anything and promote you as you progress. Well, they respect you and you have to respect them. And that's what them. I say, textile has improved over the years. Oh, it's tremendous how it's improved. 